Yeah, it's frightening. Until you hear the snap of a bullet go by your head, there's nothing else like it. Oscar-nominated director Sebastian Younger follows up his war documentary Restrepo with a new film, Corn Gall, named after a region of Afghanistan where U.S. Army Sergeant Michael Cunningham was deployed. Both men joining me to talk about this film. Good morning to you both. Thank you so much for being here. Appreciate it. Thank you. Good morning. Uh, so Restrepo was a 2010 documentary, followed basically a whole year that you, Sebastian, were there filming. And Michael, you were basically in this platoon, having the cameras follow you all mm -hmm. along, along, along with other people. But it was nominated for an Academy Award. It's gotten excellent reviews. Is that why you decided to take it the next step further and, and, and make a second film? Yeah, my colleague Tim Hetherington and I shot a couple hundred hours of video out there. It was a very intense place, uh, 20 men on a, on a ridgetop uh, in combat almost every day. Mm -hmm. We were with them off and on for a year, and we just realized there was these amazing scenes that couldn't make it into Restrepo, uh, and I just thought, I'm going to try to make a second film coming at that deployment from another angle. Yeah, you just didn't want this film to go to waste. It was yeah. just too good, yeah, huh? Yeah, absolutely. And, and now, Michael, you basically had cameras following you the whole time. What did you think? I mean, how long did it take for you to get used to the cameras being there? Uh, you know, pre pretty much um, after they were introduced and then we got shot at right afterwards. That's how long it took to get it's used like, to It's like, you know it. what, this I have is... other bigger, other yeah. bigger things to deal <laughs> with this camera really. Right right now. Now. <laughs> and this wasn't an easy assignment, Sebastian, for you. I mean, there was, you survived an IED attack. There were firefights, as you mentioned, Michael. Uh, you even talk about how hard it was to deal with boredom, which I thought was interesting. Boredom is tough. I mean, he can, Michael can attest to it. It really was almost more stressful than the combat. Right. Opinion, yeah. Just trying to find things to do, huh? Well, I mean, boredom comes with the anticipation of the unknown in war, so that's yeah. what really gets people. Yeah, your photographer, um, the, the other one that was shooting footage yeah. with you, uh, died in Libya covering a siege after you filmed the first documentary. So now you're going back and, and, and looking at his footage and using it this time around. Is that hard? Um, is that hard? I mean, to, to go back and look at his stuff that he shot? Or, or is it, I guess, you're, you're kind of honoring his wishes because he wanted to do this? You know, the footage is so mixed up between what I shot and what he shot. I don't really see it as separate. It's just what we did. And right. I made a film uh, about his life. His name's Tim Hetherington and his legacy is art. Uh, so I sort of moved, moved through that with, the, with that film. So yeah, I was all right with it. Yeah, yeah. And Mike, what was it like for the for for everybody that was involved in this? I mean, did it help to have the cameras there because you all share your personal, your heartbreaking stories? I mean, was it good to have some sort of release? Um, you know, it really depends on the journalists. You know, yeah. and we lucked out. You know, he, he tells us all the time that you know he lucked out getting getting our platoon or our company or whatever. But it's really us who lucked out you know we could have gotten is it hard to watch the footage when you go back and watch it uh not really it's just kind of like, like it had happened i mean do you see yeah it? it's kind of just like watching a home video but really good production yeah. quality you know <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's crazy. Yeah, you know, in the news lately is the whole Bo Bergdahl thing, a yeah. and with him coming back and being um, freed by the Taliban. What are your thoughts on that? W when you hear what's happening and that um, there are reports that he had walked away from his platoon, I'm sure people have asked you. I have a, a few thoughts, but um, thoughts for his father is Zayma uh, Khandaway, but that's Familde. Welcome back. And um, I mean, he's a soldier. You know, in the United States Army, that's someone's responsibility. He belongs to another NCO. You're supposed mm -hmm. to take care of your soldiers. Mm -hmm. And regardless of whatever happens, mm -hmm. whatever it is, they're still a soldier until the day they leave the Army. Mm -hmm. So that's just, that's how I looked at it. You know, if we're going to bring everybody home, we're going to bring everybody home. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and you you understand how these guys feel, and, yeah. and you've, you've seen it. And um, you know, what are your thoughts? Well, first of all, if we didn't get him back, uh, the next thing they could do with him is put him back in his uniform and cut his head off on, on video camera, which is a real, that's, that's real damage to U.S. standing in the world if they oh, do yeah. that. And the Taliban commanders, they're POWs, actually. Mm -hmm. They were, they're held as POWs, not terrorists, and we'd have to give them up in 2016 anyway. 
mm -hmm. uh, at the cessation of hostility. So at least we got something for them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, thank you both so much for joining us. And we want to let everyone know uh, about the, about Corngall that's going to be coming out. And uh, it opens locally, we should let you know, June 20th. And we have a link with all the details on where you can see the film at myfoxdfw.com. And we both appreciate you for joining us. And thank, thank you, you for your service and thank your you. service as well, because <laughs> it lets us at home really feel what these guys are out there doing. Thank so you. thank you. Thank, thank you, you both. Yeah.